I'm Mr. Red. Hello, everyone. Sydney St. James. Alert. $5,000 reward. Warning. Dead or alive. Notorious bad man. Sam Bass. Alias Sam Bouchon. And Honest F. If cited, immediately call the nearest U.S. Marshal's office. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my show today. After a month of moving Bebop Publishing Group to Georgetown, Texas, from Brenham, I took a ride south on I-35 from Georgetown to Austin, Texas. I couldn't help but notice a very large green and white highway sign that said Sam Bass Road. I became interested in just where in the world this road went. I exited and I followed it to a road sign for A.W. Grimes Boulevard. You know, I'm not sure why, but I needed to find out who these people were just like I did when I wrote a story about the runaway scrape in Texas. And then I discovered Three-Legged Willie's statue a man who played a part in the novel on the downtown square in Georgetown, or captured the memoirs of the Lou Rose Harris in a runaway scrape, or Mary Elizabeth Surratt in the Lincoln assassination. You know, I always read the old newspapers and read the memoirs before writing my stories, and I'll leave it to you when you read my novel, Sam Bass, and his horse marines and decide for yourself if he was a Robin Hood or a murderer. And stay with us. And at the end of this podcast, Dave Henry of the 1980s country duo group, Dan and Dave, will be joining us to sing the famous ballad of Sam Bass. Now, let our story begin. Welcome, everyone, to my story about Sam Bass. Sam Bass is a Texas outlaw legend, and he was immortalized in the cowboy campfires by a ballad. The ballad's name is The Ballad of Sam Bass. And today, at the end of my broadcast, I will have my good friend, who was here on an earlier episode, Dave Henry of the group Dan and Dave, he will sing that ballad, written in 1879 and recorded several times. But what I'm here to talk to you today about is I did write a novel about Sam Bass's history. And, there, and there's all sorts of reasons as to why I wrote the novel, but more importantly, when I write my novels on memoirs and true stories, I've written several, one about Mary Elizabeth Surratt, the first woman ever executed. Then I wrote another one about the runaway scrape in Texas. Uh, those were written from the memoirs of Delu Rose Harris, who as a matter of fact, wrote those memoirs in a home that I restored in Eagle Lake, Texas, and it's now known as the Smithson Struce Home. The reason I'm mentioning this is, I don't like to write historical nonfiction. I write what I call, and many people call, as far as genres are concerned, as creative nonfiction. So my story about Sam Bass, well, as far as the book is concerned, will begin by a young journalist, only 17 years old. He's out to make a name for himself. And Sam Bass was just shot in Round Rock, Texas, and he was running from the Texas Rangers. Well, guess what? This young journalist caught up with Sam out in the woods before the Texas Rangers did. And Sam Bass told his story 
to this young journalist. Now, I'll be honest with you. Sam Bass didn't die in the woods at the hands of the journalist who was there to tell the story. But it makes it more entertaining. But the story that Sam Bass told the journalist is a true story, which the entire book encompasses. So today, I just want to give you a short degree, so to speak, of Sam Bass. Although he is cloaked in folklore, few will disagree that Sam's legend has got to begin in Denton, Texas. Born on a farm outside Mitchell, Indiana, on July 21st, 1851, his parents were Daniel and Elizabeth Jane Sheeks Bass. However, Sam was orphaned before he was 13 years old, and the young cowboy spent five years at his uncle's home before running away in the year of 1869. He ran away towards the south and stopped and worked in a sawmill at Rosedale, Mississippi, before deciding to strike out for the cattle country in the late summer of 1870. This is when he arrived in Denton, Texas. Young orphan Sam handled horses in the stables at the Lacey House Hotel, and it was located on the Denton Square. And then later, he worked for the county sheriff. The county sheriff's name was William Uncle Bill Egan. He cared for the livestock. He cut up a bunch of firewood, and built fences, and he spent time as a freighter between Denton County and the railroad towns of Dallas and Sherman. Sam Bass soon became enamored with horse racing, and after acquiring a fleet filly, and it became famous, and it was known across Texas as the Denton Mayor. This was in 1874. He didn't turn his attention to professional racing and gambling after an ultimatum came down from the sheriff who would later hunt him down as an outlaw. The Denton Courthouse on the square mysteriously burned down in 1875. This is when suspicion fell on Sam's associate, Henry Underwood, most people call him Hank, who was arrested, but later released due to not being enough evidence associated with the incident. Sam Bass competed with his speedy mare around the territory, and the charming cowboy quickly fell in with thieving scandals, headed north after squandering all their earnings. And in the year 1877, he and the Collins brothers, along with three others, held up an eastbound Union Pacific passenger train in Big Springs, Nebraska. The gang stole a jaw-dropping son of $60,000 in newly minted $20 gold pieces. And to this very day, the largest single robbery was of this Union Pacific Railroad. And plus Sam Bass and his gang got $1,300 or more from four gold watches from the passengers. After dividing the loot, the bandits decided to go in pairs in different directions. So, Sam made his way back to Denton County disguised as a farmer. The fate of Sam's impressive cut of this giant heist has fueled treasure hunter legends all around the Round Rock area that we're at, all around Denton as well. And it was said that the gold was hidden in Sam Bass's cave. What cave? Where is the cave located? To this very day. All you treasure hunters out there, part of that $60,000 in gold coins is still hidden and never accounted for. 
Sam Bass and his gang quickly resumed a crime wave of robbing stagecoaches and trains within 25 miles of Dallas. His gang was actually called by many uh, journalists around the area as Sam Bass and his horse marines. Well, the Lacey House Hotel on the Denton Square was always a familiar and frequent place that Sam Bass could be seen. And the rural residents of Denton, Texas, they were well known to harbor and aid their beloved outlaw hero, the Robin Hood of Texas. It wasn't long and the Sam Bass gang were wanted outlaws who led the Texas Rangers and railway hired Pinkerton men on a spirited chase all across North Texas. Sam Bass and his horse Marines held up two stagecoaches while he was in Deadwood, South Dakota in 1877. It was here that Sam Bass had a fling with Calamity Jane and played cards from the same chair as that of Wild Bill Hickok. The same chair that Hickok sat before he was killed in a poker card game holding a dead man's hand. For those who don't know, that's aces and eights. Wild Bill Hickok was a lawman and a gunfighter and also a very good friend of Sam Bass. Then came along the fall of 1877. Sam Bass and his horse machines robbed the eastbound Union Pacific passenger train and this is when they got away with those $60,000 in $20 gold pieces. Well, after such a successful robbery, they split up into pairs and all went in different directions. Some were caught. Now Bass, however, was an excellent transformist and disguised himself as a very poor farmer and made his way back to Denton County, Texas with his share of the gold. One year later in the springtime, Sam and his gang robbed four trains within 20 miles of Dallas. Word was sent to Governor Hubbard that something had got to be done. The bandits became the object of a spirited chase all across North Texas by reward-seeking citizens. And there was also a specialized company of Texas Rangers that were headed by Junius Peak. Now you can follow the life story of Sam Bass from his childhood days to his last days in Round Rock, Texas on July 21st, 1878, all through my novel. And even though this notorious outlaw spent less than a week in this small community of Round Rock, his short visit put him and the town on the World Atlas. He also had a major street named after him that I spoke of earlier. Now, if you don't mind, I always have to take care of my sponsor because if it wasn't for my sponsor, how could I keep the lights on around this place? So after a short word of my sponsor, I'll finish up with the telling of my story of Sam Bass and welcome my guest into the studios for the singing of the Ballad of Sam Bass. Have you heard about Anchor.fm by Spotify? It's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Yep, Anchor has the tools that will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome back, everyone, for the telling of the rest of my story. It wasn't only a few years ago 
the community came together in Round Rock and they decided to name a boulevard after a deputy. The deputy's name was Deputy A.W. Grimes. He was the man that Sam Bast was accused of killing in 1878. Unlike John Wesley Harden, Bass didn't have any notches on his gun handle, and he once joked about selling his revolver for money. Now, you'll find in my book, because different people will write differently as they describe the entire Sam Bass story, but I followed it close enough, and I found where Sam Bass actually told someone when, they, when he was still alive and wounded that He had killed A.W. Grimes. And Sam Bass looked up at him and said, I'm afraid not. I didn't kill the deputy. Matter of fact, uh, I haven't killed anyone. So he actually on his deathbed confessed to that. And if you read the story, he did everything he could with his gang. Every time they robbed someone to keep their guns in the holsters. There would be no killing. He was eminent about that. So I don't think the stories that say that Sam Bass was a murderer were true. But that's me, okay? Now, before Sam met his legendary end in Round Rock, Texas, which, by the way, was on his 27th birthday, there was a notable drunken dare on the square in Denton. There were also many accounts of Sam Bass's ghost continuing to haunt Denton County in search of his hidden gold and to torment the lingering spirit of his Judas. His Judas, by the way, goes by the name of James Murphy, better known as Jim. As most of you who have read my creative historical nonfiction, you will find the truth being told with a sprinkling of what I believe actually happened and answer unanswered questions. History has said that they believe the traitor killed himself and committed suicide. Hey, Jim Mercy, Murphy, he was a coward. He couldn't have killed himself. So, If you ask yourself, what happened then? Well, now that would be a spoiler alert if I was to tell you, but I have the answer to what really happened on that last night when Jim Murphy was found dead the next day. But when writing the novel, too much information was given that he was someone who would have been too fearful of taking his own life. It was 1878, and after the Texas Rangers and reward-seeking people were trying to catch Sam Bass, he knew it was time to get out of Dodge, so to speak. (laughs) And Sam Bass rode into Round Rock, Texas, and thought they could pull off one more heist before continuing on down into Mexico. This would be their last heist in Texas. But Jim Murphy told the Texas Rangers, so they were there waiting on Sam Bass and his gang to show up. And show up they did. And so did the Texas Rangers. And it was in 1878 that Round Rock, Texas saw a great shootout. Now, not necessarily great in the standpoint of people getting killed, but the town had never seen such a shootout occur down the streets. The legend was immortalized in a cowboy song called Ballad of Sam Bass, making him actually this Robin Hood of Texas or this hero of Texas of robbing and giving to the poor. Sam Bass was killed at that shootout and a simple wooden casket by a local man 
who stayed up all night making it before Sam passed away. John W. Ledbetter walked over and administered Sam's last Christian rites at his funeral. Ledbetter only sought to save souls. Now, Reverend Ledbetter also rests in the same cemetery as Sam. He resided across the street from the graveyard when Sam Bass's death occurred. Now, Bass and Barnes sleep their endless sleep side by side in the old Round Rock Cemetery. The cemetery where Sam Bass was laid to rest is located on Highway 79 today. That road is more commonly known as the Sam Bass Road, the one where 35 has a big green and white sign that says Sam Bass Road. Well, it is across from the Sam Bass Circle Apartments and the Sam Bass Professional Building. And there's also the Sam Bass Ball Field. All of these at that same location. What more recognition could the Robin Hood of Texas ask for? Sam Bass will never be forgotten. Long after people forget who he was, his name will still live on in the great state of Texas. Let me wrap it up by letting you know that you can find the ebook, the paperback, or the audiobook of Sam Bass by Sidney St. James at anywhere great books are sold. And now, what everyone has been waiting for, the ballot of Sam Bass. Thanks for joining me. Well, thank you everyone for joining me today for this exciting edition of Sam Bass and his Horse Marines. Today, I've invited historian and music man himself, Dave Henry, back into my recording studio to sing the closing song to my broadcast today. The song's title is The Ballad of Sam Bass. And this song has been attributed to John Denton of Gainesville, Texas, and was supposedly written in 1879. Michael Martin Murphy sings his version. Harry McClintock sang it in 1928 on a diamond disc record. And let's not forget the version by Alan McCormick. But today, to finish out my broadcast, let's welcome Dave Henry of Dan and Dave, who will sing for you the ballad of Sam Bass. Good night, everyone. Sam Bass was born in Indiana. It was his native home. And at the age of 17, Sam began to roam When Sam first came to Texas A cowboy for to be A kinder hearted fellow You seldom ever see Sam used to deal in race stock One called the Denton Mare He matched her in scrub races and he took her to the fair He used to coin the money And spend it rather free He always drank good whiskey Wherever he might be Sam had four companions Four bold and daring lads Frank Jackson, Henry Underwood Joe Collins an old dad Such bold and daring cowboys The rangers never knew They whipped the Texas rangers And they ran the boys in blue Jim Murphy was arrested And then released on bail He 
jumped his bond at Tyler And then he took off on the trail But Major Barnes had posted him That was all a stall It was a plan to capture Sam Before the coming fall Sam met his fate at Round Rock July the 21st They pierced for Sam with rifle balls And it did out his purse Sam is now a corpse He's six foot under clay And Jackson's on the border Still trying to get away Till he stole Sam Good's gold And he didn't Sold out Sam and Barnes And left their friends to mourn And what a scorching Jim should get When Gabriel blows his horn Perhaps he's gone to heaven There's nothing us can say But if I'm right in my surmise He's gone the other We sure want to thank you for tuning in to the edition of the Sam Bass Show and Tell here. And I'm so glad my friend Dave Henry dropped by and played the final ballad of Sam Bass. And for the rest of you listeners out there who like these good cowboy songs and these good cowboy stories, be sure to hit the subscribe button or hit the follow button or, better than that, buy any of my books. Thank you from the Sydney St. James Show. Good night, everyone.